In our Sunday School lesson last week, we took a look at God's workmanship. God's workmanship are all of those who sincerely believe, who all of those who sincerely walk by faith. And in sincerely moving in faith, we are to produce good works. We are to produce the fruits of righteousness, which we saw in our Sunday School lesson last week that Paul said to the Galatians, those in fruits, they include fruits like love, fruits like joy, fruits like peace. And here in our Sunday School lesson today, we are going to pick right up, literally, where we left off at in our Sunday School lesson last week. We're gonna start off there in the 11th verse and we're gonna work our way down through the 22nd verse. Now, we'll see there in the opening verse of our lesson that the dispute that I referenced, that I brought up in the in our Sunday School lesson back on Christmas, we'll see that that dispute, it is essentially referenced, it is brought back up here in this 11th verse where Paul, he is speaking directly to the Gentiles who were in the church of Ephesus. We have to remember that the church of Ephesus it was made up of both Jew and Gentiles. And in that Christmas Sunday school lesson, we saw where Paul was directing a message to the Jews who made up that church as well. Essentially speaking that they should not think themselves more highly than the Gentile believers. And that is essentially brought back up there in the 11th verse where Paul, he speaks to the Gentiles who are being called uncircumcised by those who were called or calling themselves the circumcision. And so we have to understand those that were calling themselves the circumcision, that is speaking of the Jews. And so the Jews in calling the Gentiles uncircumcised, don't you understand that they were essentially bad mouthing the Gentiles. They were, were calling them uncircumcised in a derogatory manner that we see there. This was a, a bad habit that the Jews had in feeling that they could look down on others because they felt themselves to be so special because they were God's chosen people. However, as we saw in my Christmas Sunday School lesson a few weeks ago, all people, when you come to Christ, all of us are one, all of us are the same, all of us are equal. In saying that all of us, we are special treasures in the eyes of God. We are God's children. That's what we saw in that lesson on Christmas. Now, there in the 12th verse, we'll see where Paul, he speaks to how the Gentiles were once separated from Christ, how they were once excluded from the citizenship of Israel by blood, and that they were once foreigners to the covenants of the promise. However, we'll see that Paul, he says there in the 13th verse, he says that the Gentiles, that they were brought near by the blood of Christ. Now, what were they brought near to is the question. What are Gentiles, what are they brought near to? Now, again, if we take a look at those verses there, the Gentile believers were and are brought near to Christ and the covenant of promise that is referenced there. Now for all people, the covenant of promise, we must understand what is said again in the third chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse. And in that verse, it is said that whosoever or whoever believes in the only begotten son of God will do what? Will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So the question that, that I feel I must ask now is, why is Paul, why is Paul bringing this up? Why is Paul making the statement that we see him make there to the Gentile believers? Why is it that he's essentially letting the Gentiles know that they are now close to Christ, that they are now again close to the covenant of promise that they were once separated from there? We'll see there in the 14th verse that he tells us that it is because Christ is our peace. Notice that Paul, he says there in that 14th verse, he says our in that statement. He isn't saying that Christ belongs to one specific people, right? He isn't saying that Christ belongs to the Jews only. He isn't saying that Christ belongs to the Gentiles only. He says our there. He is our peace. So in other words, this peace, it belongs to all believers. 
whether Jew or Gentile. Again, he makes the point there in that verse, he makes it even more clear when he says that he, that is Christ, has made two groups, that is again, Jews and Gentiles. He has made two groups, Paul said, one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Jesus, he said this himself. Okay, I want you to understand that, that Paul, he isn't making anything up here. Jesus, he said this himself in the 10th chapter, it is recorded in the 10th chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse, a verse that you have heard me reference a lot recently. And Jesus, he said there in that verse, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. This fold, again, Jesus was speaking to the Jews when he said that, this fold is in reference to the fold of the Jews. The other sheep, we should understand, is in reference to the Gentiles. Again, Jesus said in the 10th chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse, other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also, Jesus said, I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there, Jesus, he said, will be one flock. Jesus didn't say that there will be multiple flocks. We have to understand that Gentiles are all people that are unable to trace their blood back to Judah. They're unable to trace their blood, in other words, back to Israel, Jacob himself. All people are Gentiles that are unable to trace that lineage. And so again, Jesus said in the 10th chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse that there won't be multiple flocks. He said that there will be one flock. And then he said that there will be one shepherd as we look at that verse there. So question, should there have been any hostilities in the church of Ephesus? What do you think? Absolutely not, right? Well, an even better question for you. So if there wasn't supposed to be any hostilities between believers, in the church of Ephesus, should there be any hostilities within the church today? Now, I want you to understand, when I say the church today, I'm talking about the entire body of Christ. I'm talking about the full collective of sincere believers. Should there be any hostilities within the body of Christ? Absolutely not. There should be no hostilities within the church today. But look at the church. The church is, it is so divided. It is divided among race. It is divided among denomination, right? It reminds me of what MLK, what Martin Luther King once said about Sunday, in which he said that Sunday is the most segregated day of the week when believers go out to church and they worship apart. Sincere believers, there should be no division amongst us. We should all be on one accord and we should all be, be worshiping together. So the question that I feel I must ask again today, I've asked this before, is why are we so separated when we are supposed to be of sincere faith? And that's essentially what, what Paul was bringing up. That's essentially what Paul was asking to those who made up the church of Ephesus. He's essentially asking, why are you so separated? Why are you so apart when all of us, we are supposed to be on one accord? When all of us are of faith in Christ, the only begotten son of God, we are of full faith in the Lord. Why are we so separated? And, and he touches on that. We'll see even more as we go through the scripture here. We're there in the 15th verse. Paul, he says there in that 15th verse that, that Christ has abolished enmity, the law of commandments contained in the ordinances. You see, at one point in time, the, the Israelites, they weren't supposed to intermingle with the, the Gentiles for reasons because the Gentiles, they would worship idols. And the thought behind the Israelites intermingling with the Gentiles would be that the Israelites they would learn the manners and the conduct of the Gentiles and they would be pulled away from the Lord where they should have been living 
by the law of God. They should have been living by the words that they agreed to in the covenant in the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus. But, but the Israelites, they, at that point in time in the Old Testament scripture, they desired to be just like the Gentiles, ironically speaking. They desired to be just like the Gentiles. They wanted to have a king rule over them. That's why Saul became uh, the king, why he was appointed king. They desired to have kings rule over them. They desired to go out and, and to worship idols as well, rather than commit themselves to the Lord. Which is, again, like I said, is ironic because within the, the church of Ephesus, we have two groups, Jews and Gentiles, that are of faith in the Lord. They are faith in the only begotten Son of God, but the now the Jews, they want to look down on the Gentiles, where in times past, they wanted to be like the Gentiles. I, again, like I said, uh, very ironic there. And so we'll see again, Paul, he states there in that 15th verse that, that Christ abolished the way of old, if you will, to where again, the Israelites were supposed to be separate from, from the Gentiles. But again, Paul is saying there in that 15th verse that that way has been abolished by Christ and created in Christ himself is one new man from the two, from both the Jews and Gentiles, Paul said, so that there would be peace between the two, between the Jew and Gentiles. So, Again, I would ask today, why are those who are of faith, why are we so adamant in being separated? Why are we so adamant in being apart from one another when again, Christ has given himself for us to be together? It makes you wonder again, you know, all of those who choose to be segregated, who profess that they believe in the only begotten Son of God, it makes you wonder what law are they living by? Because the law of Christ, as you'll see, and I reference this scripture all the time, is that we are to love the Lord with our whole heart, right? And then guess what we are supposed to do in that love? We are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, right? So it makes you again wonder, all of those who love to segregate themselves and they say that they are of faith, it makes you wonder, what law are they abiding by? We'll see that Paul, he went on to state there in the 16th verse that, that Christ reconciled both to the Lord, the both there being again, the Jew and the Gentile, reconciled both to the Lord in his body through the cross Again, we, we, we've essentially talked about this. You know, we, we often think of, of Christ's death on the cross solely being to save us from sin. That's what we say all the time. When, when someone asks, if I were to ask you, uh, what, did, what did Christ accomplish by dying on the cross? We would say, well, he saved the world from sin. But Paul, he gives us some more reasoning here to, to what was actually accomplished at the cross, what was set out, what was desired to, to be set from the cross. Paul, he says that another reason that has now been revealed to us is that Christ died on the cross to do away with the divisions that, that would creep up, that would crop up, that was already present in mankind. Paul says that Christ died on the cross to do away with those divisions, which sadly still remains today between man and man. We'll see there in the 17th verse that Paul, he even tells us there, Jesus, he, he came and he preached peace to you who were afar off. That's again in reference to the Gentiles who, who were once afar off, which Jesus, did do. There were Gentiles that would come and they would search Jesus out and they would find him and Jesus uh, would minister to them. Again, Jesus, Paul even tells us there in that 17th verse that he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. So Paul he is saying there that cross, that Christ, he preached to both Jew and Gentile. There, there were no divisions. There, there was no, no barrier to who Christ would minister to. And so again, the question 
would be raised that if Christ preached peace to both Jew and Gentile, why was the barrier? And why is the barrier still being raised within the church to where we divide ourselves? Again, like I said, we divide ourselves among race, among class, right? We divide ourselves among denomination. And again, I want you to understand, I'm not saying that we do this just in the world, but this takes place within the church. We, we seriously, again, we have to take consideration in how we are moving. You see, those who are of sincere faith should not move that way. We should not move with, with hostility between brother and sister in Christ, right? We, again, we should love each other, okay? So, so the sincere believer does not move that way. Now, one who likes to profess they are of faith, but don't actually live by faith, now they certainly will move that way. But again, like I've said to you recently, we shouldn't move like no professed believer. We should move like one who's sincere in faith. Now, again, we'll see there in the 18th verse that because of Christ, Paul, he states that we both, and the we there is speaking again of Jew and Gentile, sincere believers, said that we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And there in the 19th verse, specifically to the Gentiles, Paul, he states, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, as he referenced earlier in, in the scripture of our lesson. He says to the Gentiles, but you are now fellow citizens with the saints and, and members of the household of God. You see, this is something that I explain to people all the time. There are many people who desire to be special in the eyes of God, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I, I desire to be, to be blessed and highly favored in the eyes of God, right? But there are many people who will convert over to Judaism, I'm not, and I'm not trying to speak against Judaism, but some do it for the purpose and the reason that they desire to be God's chosen people. When Christ himself said that whosoever believes in me will not perish, but will have everlasting life. There is no difference, I want you to understand today, between Jew and Gentile. When we are of sincere faith in the only begotten Son of God, there is no division, there is no barriers. That was abolished by Christ himself. All of us, we are of one flock. That means that all of us are God's chosen people. As we saw a couple of Sundays ago, that in other words means that all of us who are of sincere faith, we are all God's children. All of us, we are loved by the Lord. So Paul, he tells us there in that 20th verse, he lets us know that this truth, it is not a subjective truth. It's not a subjective truth that, that Paul is making up here, but rather it is the divine truth built on the foundation of the apostles. The, the apostles, they preach the gospel. They preach that divine truth. The prophets there, they prophesy the, they prophesy the coming of Christ and then Christ himself is the chief cornerstone of this truth. In the 21st there, Paul, he, he goes on to say of Christ being the cornerstone of this truth. He brings us all together into a holy temple in the Lord. All sincere believers, again, I want you to understand today that we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Again, Paul said, that we are the temple. I want you to understand that the church, the temple, it's not a building. The church is all who sincerely walk by faith. All of those who live in obedience to the word of God. I want you to understand that we are the church. And then he, Paul, he tells us there in the 22nd verse, he tells us that we have all been built together, not apart. We have all been built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. And so the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which dwells in all of us, it brings us all together as sincere believers, where 
those who are professing their faith but aren't actually walking by faith, they may stir up some mess because they are spiritually immature. But all of us who are of sincere faith, we should not be spiritually immature. All right, we, we should again, we should be walking by faith, led by the Holy Spirit, producing again the fruits of righteousness or the fruits of the Spirit. And those fruits include, include fruits like again, love, joy, and peace, right? And so all of us as sincere believers, we should all be coming together. And we should be coming together on one accord. Because again, all of us, we, we make up the, the body of Christ. We make up the church. And within the body of Christ, within the church, there should be no hostilities and there should be no divisions. So again, what we should take away from our lesson this week is for all of us as sincere believers to, to be on one accord, for all of us to love one another and stop being so separated among lines that are created by a worldly mindset. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.